I gotta figure out what I'm gonna wear tonight, because frankly, I got a lot of Fresno State gear and I need to sort this out. But tell you guys, I got a lot of options to choose from. This is what I mean. I got a Game Worn 52 jersey, a Game Worn 42 jersey, another t-shirt, another one, and the list keeps going on. Here's the thing is I don't know if I'm really early or really late, but there is like nobody here. Oh shoot, no, except for some people behind me. Take that back, there is somebody here.
as you can see sitting that close yes my view of the game was a little bit obstructed but here's the one thing i will say is that when you're sitting that close you see things more things than you should see you hear things <laughs> more things than what you should hear and i'm just gonna leave it at that but as for the game itself Apparently Fresno was supposed to run away with this game. This was supposed to be a guaranteed win. But there was a point around the fourth quarter, right before the quarterback on Colorado's side ended up throwing the interception, where they were just running the football. And you could tell the offensive line on Colorado was just manhandling Fresno's defensive line. And it was at that moment where I'm literally sitting there and I'm kind of leaning back like, Fresno's going to lose this one. You could tell for some reason Colorado, whether it was conditioning, whether they wanted it, they were in control. Even though the game was tied, they were in control. But here was my biggest pet peeve kicker about the game. In the beginning of the game, yes, I think um, Colorado's running backs, I think they finished like 170 yards. So yes, they were moving the ball. They were moving the change. But they were not stretching the field. It was this dude, 6'6 six, six wide receiver, that was stretching the field the entire time of the game. And here was the one thing that kind of bugged me. And I'm looking, and I'm, call, I'm already calling out plays in my head. I'm like, okay, well, put double coverage. Put a safety over the top. Give someone help. Stop putting someone on an island with this dude. And after the game, I'm driving home. And all of a sudden, I hear Tedford on the radio, the head coach. He's talking about, oh, we need matchups. We need, us, we need to figure out how to match our players better up with the opponent. Unless one of your players are 6'6", which it's fine, it's genetics, you can't control that. You are not gonna match anybody up with them. And so I'm watching, I'm like, why couldn't you? I'm gonna say it again. Cover two, put a safety over the top, double team up, something. I mean, this guy was torching you the entire night. You could do something better than putting a six one, six foot cornerback on this guy, and he's six six. But regardless, you can't control the game. Apparently, they get paid money to coach, and I'm just a fan that's sitting on the sideline. But, as like I said, the game was good. I go to a lot of these games, so I'm probably going to make more of these videos. And hope to see you guys next time. So until next time, catch you guys later.